Good morning. This is Bill from Curious. Uh, there they are. The minute I start, I was just going to say how it was kind of a quiet, bird free morning, and then like 12 of them come in just to terrorize me from that tree. There they go. Maybe it's only six or seven. And uh, it's 12. <sighs> See what they do. Anyway, it's the uh, third day in a row I've done a video, which is quite rare. Uh, but uh, cars keep getting ready, which is quite nice. So I'm going to keep going. And uh, today I've got this 1980 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Uh, unlike the Lincoln I did the other day, they do not put an accent over the uh, E. So it is a Coupe de Ville. It's not a Coupe de Ville, uh, which would frankly become insufferable. So uh, quite happy that that's all it is. Uh, this is, oh shit, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it was the first downsized Cadillac. Not exactly. I mean, the first one came out in 77 and this one was in fact a refresh design that sort of improved the looks of that car uh, but it was still that generation that uh, came along and changed the way that people thought of Cadillac sort of uh, you know they were enormous absolutely enormous 77 they downsized even though we look at this car today and think oh my god it's giant well it really wasn't at the time this was one of the smaller ones and uh, it is to me one of the uh, quintessential Cadillacs because it's the one that I grew up with. It's the one I came of age with. Uh, you know, in the 1980s as a kid, I, you know, I just started to sort of look around, see what cars were out there. And uh, these cars were different from all the other stuff on the road. A lot of stuff wanted to look like them, uh, but only Cadillacs like this kind of looked like Cadillacs like this. And uh, you know, what they were doing, GM was getting very lazy. In fact, 1980 you could almost pin it as the beginning uh, I wouldn't say the beginning of the end for GM because, of course, they rebirthed themselves. But uh, it was the height of the Malaise era. Uh, it was uh, just before uh, Ronald Reagan's, you know, breakfast in America thing. Or maybe that was Super Tramp. Uh, either way, whatever. It was. It was sort of the height of things going wrong for the United States. Uh, everybody was worried about fuel and gas and energy, and uh, all the cars were losing their giant V8 engines, and they were becoming more. Uh, efficient and you know it was it was the times that was guiding car design uh, at this point and not the way that people wanted cars and not the way that companies wanted to produce them and Cadillac was is sort of blindly moving along, trying to build cars in the way that they'd always built cars. The same big body on frame, you know, the quintessential American car stuff that they'd been doing for 50 years. Meanwhile, the European makers and the Japanese makers were all modernizing and making stuff that people found, uh, if not more interesting to look at, certainly better to drive and uh, much more modern and with the times. And that was a very tough time for GM. It got worse from here. In fact, I think this 1980 is the last, I'll call it the last real Cadillac. It's not entirely fair, but I'm going to call it that. Uh, because everything that came after the 81, 82, 83 uh, was even more of a compromise than this one. This is the last Cadillac that had an actual Cadillac engine, for instance. So I think that backs up my assertion. Uh, but anyway, we'll just get into things. Uh, Cadillac was founded in 1902 by a guy named Henry Leland. A very interesting cat. Uh, when he founded it, he robbed a lot of Henry Ford's investors. So uh, Ford, yeah, not really known as a very nice guy, held a grudge over that for years. And that came into play, oh, I don't know, 15 years later when uh, Leland uh, was a part of Lincoln. So <clears throat> we can get it. Well, we won't get into that. That was in that video I did on the 79 uh, Continental the other day. Uh, but anyway, so Cadillac was an incredible company from the moment it emerged. They won a, a Dewar Trophy for engineering, which was no small thing. Uh, they essentially created the interchangeability of parts. That was something that really didn't happen at the time. I know it seems intuitive now, but back then it wasn't. It was very tough to take an engine part from one car and use it on another. Well, uh, Cadillac sort of pioneered the ability to do that. Uh, they also uh, came up with the first self-starter. <laughs> 
that was a big deal back then. You just push a button and the car starts instead of cranking it or whatever you had to do. And uh, Cadillac went on to really be what they called themselves, which was the standard of the world. For 70 years, Cadillac was special. It was more special than every other car on the road. It was faster, it handled better, bigger, more equipped. Uh, it was the envy of everybody. And uh, they, you know, they got cocky and arrogant because of that, much as the way Mercedes did uh, probably 10 years later and uh, why they had to take a bath when Lexus came out. So uh, it's just something that happens to car companies. Uh, but this car, this Coupe de Ville, was styled in the design that made Cadillac special and made it what it was and truly was one of the last uh, bits and pieces that uh, made Cadillac uh, a pretty neat car. After this, it all went south. They had to come up with you know, the Cimarron, the Alante, all that 90s, you know, badge engineering stuff. And only recently have they caught their footing again. And uh, now we're making sales records. So <clears throat> anyway, you can see inside the trunk, everything nice and lovely. Uh, very proper. Lots of room in here. Uh, this was something Henry Hill could have stuffed some bodies in in that Goodfellas movie. No issue at all. Uh, there's the spare tire cover. I've got my bag of crap with me. We'll get into that in a minute, but that's going to be fun. And uh, there are the uh, jacking instructions still stuck to the uh, underside of the trunk and that rather stunning princess green paint. Uh, but uh, anyway, everything nice and proper. Now it should be back there. Uh, there's the crest. The uh, Antoine de la Cadillac Sur, like, what the hell? Antoine de la Moth Sur la Cadillac. Uh, famous charlatan Cadillac is named for, a guy who completely fabricated uh, his nobility, made it all up, ended up marrying a little noble girl who fell for his crap, and uh, ended up running New Orleans and then finally running Detroit. Uh, pretty fascinating cat. Uh, but the whole crest, this thing with what I say are ducks. I know someone else said it was pheasants or something, but whatever. Uh, this Cadillac crest was his wholly fabricated crest. He just made it up out of whole cloth to pretend he was from nobility. Love that guy. Okay, this is an interesting engine. This is a 368 cubic inch V8, uh, six liters, and it was available in 1980 only, at least in this incarnation. In 81, it went to that horrific 864 thing uh, where it would deactivate cylinders, something that's pretty standard now in V8s, but uh, Cadillac really botched the engineering back then and it was awful. Uh, also, you could get one of those Oldsmobile diesels in these things, which were even worse. So uh, this, was based on the 472 and 500 architecture uh, that had been around for many years. In fact, the 472 terrific motor, 500 terrific motor, all of the, the I think the 472 had 375 horse, the 500 had 400 horse, absolutely amazing. Uh, but by the time this one rolled around, what they did was make the pistons much, much smaller, uh, creating a smaller, you know, cubic inch displacement and lower horsepower and emissions and that sort of thing, uh, and uh, bumped the horsepower, I don't know, what, like 160 in this form, uh, with torque in the mid twos. Uh, the 500 had over 500 pound-feet of torque. This thing has less than half of that. Uh, the only good thing I'll say for it, not just that it's the last well-engineered Cadillac engine, uh, but by using these little cylinders and this giant iron block and heads, uh, they've created an engine that's essentially going to be bulletproof. I mean, it's under zero stress at all. Uh, it's got inches of metal around the cylinders, loads of room for water cooling. Uh, and these cars in 1980, 77 through 80, uh, they had a very high resale value, unlike Cadillacs that came afterwards. They were thought of as very, very reliable and very bulletproof. And uh, that is held true. That's why you still see quite a few of these things running around. Many of them, even with that 4100 motor that came afterwards, which is, you know, kind of crap compared to this one. One, but uh, there it is, the last true Cadillac motor to be put in a Cadillac, and uh, that's a big deal. Uh, sales figures for, for 1980 were half of what they were in 79, so people noticed. You know, let me just go back to this thing again. Look at that. This is princess green paint. Uh, it's a very, very rare uh, color for Cadillac. I mean, there is a few of them out there. Uh, but one of the reasons it's rare is it's quite daring. <laughs> I mean, people are going to see you coming in this thing. It would look fantastic on Miami Beach. Uh, the guy who owned this one put Krager 
uh, wire wheels on it, which, you know, are very period correct. You could have got those at the same time as the car was built uh, with beautiful little Cadillac spinners, nice thick wires. Uh, there you see it does have front disc brakes, which was nice. And I think the car is just drop dead gorgeous. I mean, it's got that uh, lower uh, hood line, which came in the 1980s with the wider and more muted Rolls-Royce grille, the four lights, the big chrome bumpers, the hood ornament, the swooping lines, the triangularly going back into the windshield. Uh, the Coupe de Ville's like this had full chrome around all the window frames. The sedans didn't. Uh, it's got that cabriolet package, that little quarter top in the back with the Coupe de Ville logo and the wreaths and the crests. Uh, it was also the first Cadillac in many, many years that didn't come with fender skirts. And uh, I didn't say this, but there was a V6 option for this car, uh, which was the first Cadillac to not have at least eight cylinders since 1914. So times they were a changing. They certainly were. Uh, in the back, uh, you can see it still has the uh, gas filler right behind the license plate. That's a feature that I always loved. Love those uh, vertical tail lamps. I think they look great on this car. The uh, flat back window, which I think is gorgeous. And uh, this one did have a nice little stainless uh, door edge guard kit on the side. So uh, I think it's an absolutely gorgeous car. Let me pull up a little bit out of the sun. keep going. Bear with me. Ah, you hear the way that thing just fires right up. It really is a terrific engine. Low on horsepower, but super high on reliability. Okay, inside we have Cadillac dark green leather which contrasts, I think, beautifully with the uh, the princess green outside. Uh, you could tell this thing was well maintained. Out of the sun, when they're beat up, all of these door panels end up cracking, separating. This thing starts popping out, popping forward. Uh, you know, everything becomes loose and not very good after it sits out for a while. So the build quality of this car is pretty damn good. And the way this particular example was preserved is great. So uh, everything nice and proper there. Uh, the Canadians in the back seat you know you don't get much more chipper than that you got nice cool dark green leather you got plenty of leg room uh, you got seat bolts for three everyone's gonna be fairly happy back there uh, I love the back of the seats with these big leather pockets and the pull handles and all the chrome and you know all the stuff that uh, is gone this is the American car uh, that really just doesn't exist anymore uh, what the hell was I gonna do here Let's hop in, just fire it up for a minute. You still have the two key system, the square for ignition, the round for the trunk and door locks. And it's just all very, very cool. Okay, so there we have a horizontal uh, speedometer, you know, what you'd expect. Quite small, actually, for the year. Uh, not that easy to read for old people. Uh, you've got a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, so you can move it in and out like this, and you can move it up and down. And I think GM has a much better tilt system uh, than the uh, than the one at Ford. I really, really do. Ford's is weird, and it hinges right here at the wheel, so you get this dramatic movement of the wheel. Uh, GM's hinges way back there, which makes more sense to me. Uh, here you've got your wiper controls, you've got your light controls, you've got expanses of faux wood. Uh, you've got your needle fuel tank up there, unleaded fuel only. There it is for the 1980s. Uh, you've got an AM FM 8 track. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, your climate control down here, you see it's in the red because it's kind of hot or uh, cold outside. Uh, oh my god, over here you've got your ash ashtray. Yeah, there's a beautiful ashtray. Uh, glove box with the uh, Cadillac manual in there, the DeVille script on the front and the Cadillac script above that. And uh, Cadillac's fantastic uh, removable garbage can and the uh, passenger footwell. Uh, that thing just slides right out so you can empty it. And I just love any car that comes factory with a garbage can for your waist. Uh, there you've got a pretty standard look at rear view mirror, uh, neat little place to stick your garage door openers, and uh, those things are, yeah, that's just the light controls for when you're in it, so all very cool. Uh, all right, let's get out, and I'm gonna show you what I love about this thing. 
One of the problems with these cars was storage space. You know, you talk about your gun storage. Other than the glove box, you really don't have that much room. Uh, part of that is because you have a bench seat that's designed to fit uh, six people. Well, three up front and three in the back. Enter this great little advanced auto parts accessory kit thing. Jeez, everything's so hard one-handed. Oh my God. All right, let's get that in. I suppose it wouldn't have been advanced auto parts back then, probably Western Auto, if I had to guess. All right, and that would fit not very well with the eight tracks up there. All right, so let's get those out of there. That would fit rather beautifully over your little transmission hump. <laughs> and it's got little clawed feet to keep it in place. So, all right, let's see what we got. Where's the with this one. I mean, George, I was listening to that on the way in. It's fantastic. These two, oh, there's too much eight tracks. I got to cut down on those things. Let's get that back in. See what we got. Bear with me. If it all works out, you'll like the car I've got for tomorrow. It's uh, pretty neat putting up. Oh, geez. They want the keys. Where the hell do they throw those things? What the hell did I do with the keys? They just fell out of my hands and they vanished. And they slide across the leather. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is insane. Oh, I'm gonna pause it while I go on a key hunt. All right, keys found. I, I'm telling you, know, it's the coronavirus whiskey. Of course, if you read the news, the whole coronavirus thing is surging. Everybody's getting it. It's all the rage. And uh, as a result, I've really upped the whiskey content. And uh, that certainly has me a bit screwed up. Like yesterday, I forgot to run the damn headlights on the Riviera. I mean, the whole point of the video was running the headlights on the Riviera. I'd promised to do that at the shop today and have an addendum video, but I'd probably forget that too. And and, uh, you know, thank you, coronavirus, for that. So, uh, but anyway, you know, it's working. Haven't yet contracted it. So, uh, everything's working out all right. I've contracted other stuff from the Asian massages, and now I haven't. But I certainly haven't got coronavirus, and that's a plus. And I definitely credit all the whiskey intake for that. So, uh, anyway, let's fire this thing up and see what we got. Love that it still has this great little. Cadillac key tag you would have got at Kmart back in the day. All right, there's that V8 rumbling to life. Very nice. And here we've got this guy. We got a George Jones 8 track. So let's give that a go. She's always sleeping. Oh, that's just fantastic. She lets him know. Oh my God, he's lamenting about Southern women or, you know, how he misses them and how he's drinking a lot and how the new guy she's got is drinking a lot and everybody's drinking a lot and oh, that's my kind of music. So, all right, let me get my seatbelt on. And let me tell you, there is something that just could not feel any better about driving around a princess green Miami Coupe de Ville with dark green leather Cadillac interior uh, listening to George Jones on the uh, wood knobbed 8 track. Uh, if you haven't had that experience, I frankly deeply recommend it. Uh, you want to talk about a way to detox from the day. I did that driving home last night and it was fantastic. By the time I got home, I forgot how much I hate everything and everybody and it was just amazing. Okay, there you see that beautiful big hood leading the way with the Cadillacs, uh, with the, I don't know, wreaths on that one, but the crest, uh, all very nice stuff. Uh, <laughs> the very slow opening electric gates, which again, suit this Cadillac very well. Uh, you know, it feels like I'm in the 70s, uh, you know, going through uh, into the Playboy Mansion. Zip through there. And we'll see if Dalton got the windshield clean enough to keep going or if I got to pause it till we get to the end of the street. And 
not bad. Probably one of his better windshields. Still not great. You still got all that, but yeah, I've seen worse. Uh, so anyway, here's what's going to surprise you, is I think of these things, again, as a giant full-framed Luxo barge that you don't really steer. You send commands to the helm and you ring down low for more steam. But in fact, in 1980, this downsized Cadillac was thought of as, you know, by the car writers at the time, the automotive journalists, as far more nimble and better handling and all of this stuff that you think about when you think of CTSV. Uh, than you would uh, than you would believe. So it's kind of interesting to read. Uh, honestly, to me, it's still something you navigate. You use your hood uh, hood ornament there to find a point in the distance, and you just kind of make course corrections as you steer towards it. Uh, but uh, I suppose back then, when everything was a giant land yacht, and there were still you know uh, millions of them on the road, uh, this thing seemed like a pretty sleek and uh, very nimble Cadillac at the time. Love this pencil thin steering wheel with the wood inlay, still in nice shape. We got, um, we got no horn. Fix that. That probably has a fantastic horn, this car, so that's irritating. Should have cut that in the shop. And uh, let's get George Jones back up. Uh, we got some sultry piano music. Oh my god, is that guy depressing? It's fantastic. So zero steering effort, of course. Uh, you know, here's the acceleration from the car. I want to say it was zero to 60 in like 13 seconds, which it really sucks. But you can feel that there's this inkling of torque under there that sort of remains from when this engine was a real 472 or 500. It still has just a residue of that uh, that is uh, very welcome and appreciated. Uh, going down the road, you've got your uh, fiber optic indicators for your lights on top of the fenders, your crest, your crease in the hood. Uh, you've got this beautifully finished dashboard, which felt different and nicer than just about every other American car out there. Uh, you had to get into Rolls Royce or Mercedes to feel kind of a more fancy dashboard. And you just feel like the king of the world in this thing, in your two-door, you know, Cadillac luxury coupe. Uh, there's just an absolute loveliness to driving it. And now, at this age, you know, the people on the street, they give you the thumbs up, they stare, they look at it. Uh, you know, this has become a pretty rare sight. Uh, growing up in Naples, Florida, where the average age is deceased and everybody has more money than, you know, IBM, and you saw these things all over the place. But, you know, I did watch them slowly get replaced by Mercedes and BMW and other European makers, and Cadillac just fell off the wayside, and it was sad to see. But the good news is Cadillac rebirthed themselves. They were born again by... Well, but frankly, by people who don't like Cadillacs very much, so there are no more pencil-thin steering wheels or wire wheels, but, you know, they are damn good cars. And this is a damn good car. Again, not, not a Malaise era junker. I mean, this is a car that was thought of as very reliable at the time. Oh, the phone going off. Uh, a car that was thought of as having a very high resale value, which it did, and uh, it was a car that people still aspired to. It was the last vestige of Cadillac as the, the love of God postman. You know, I'd go beep at him if I had a horn, but I also don't want him to pull out an AK and take me out. Um, it was the last vestige of Cadillac as a aspirational pinnacle of the American car chain goal, you know, that bankers and lawyers and doctors and investment people would, would end up with. This was it. This was, after this car, eh, it kind of just became the thing of, of retirees of, you know, all stripes who had maybe done well in their pensions or 401ks. You know, kick down out of that uh, automatic. God, I love the green in this car. I really do. You'd have to pry this out of my family. I mean, this is one I would keep. I am telling you right now. I have this uh, fantasy about taking one of these beautiful Coupe de Vils and putting an uh, aluminum 6.2 MS1 Corvette engine in it uh, with uh, one of those four-speed overdrives and just driving it across the country, getting the hell away from everybody else in what would have become the world's greatest car. Someday I may just do that. Love those big... Ah, triangular 
uh, turn indicators. And, and again, man, what, what a nice feeling going down the road in this thing. Anyway, if you have an interest, this one's for sale at Auto House of Naples. You can find them at autohousenaples.com uh, on the web or by phone at 239-263-8500. Uh, nice guys, you'd be happy you called and you'd be very happy to put this one in your stable. Uh, these things are trending very much upward in the collectability market. Uh, people are sort of realizing their attractiveness and their value as collectibles. Uh, you know, a lot of old collectible cars, you wouldn't want to drive the next town over. Uh, this thing, if it's maintained right and in good shape, you drive it across 12 states and you feel like a million bucks. It's just a great old cruiser. So thank you for having a look. Really appreciate it. The 8-track, I tell you what, you want to talk about a mythical... I still don't understand the technology of the 8-track. <laughs> it is a bizarre musical format to me. I don't know how they do it. But uh, we got George Jones, we're gonna make it into work and we're gonna have a good time. So thanks for having a look. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.